On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're tossing the rule book and making your sounds pop in the mix. Well, am I ever excited about today's session? Totally inspired by an awesome comment and question left by Robin. This is on a session that I posted a few weeks ago called Sample Your Remix, where I was taking all of your contributions for our Ogre collaboration and I was laying them out on a sampler, putting everything on a keyboard. Well, Robin, I hope you don't mind, but I'm gonna go ahead and share your comment and question verbatim because this is just a perfect job of setting up something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. Robin shares, those sample parts sound brilliant. Could you shed any light on how you've treated the original submission samples to make them pop like that? What a great question, Robin. Thank you so much for engaging on the channel. Yeah, this is a perfect opportunity for me to share a major discovery that I've made over the past decade, particularly over the past five years. And so for today's session, I've got a couple of great examples of exactly how I like to make sounds pop, how I like to make sounds literally jump out of the speakers. Now, I know some of you can relate to this just from experience, but I feel like I spent the first half of my career learning all of these rules and regulations, even having senior engineers kind of looking over my shoulder and giving me a hard time about over-processing stuff. They were always encouraging me to do your best to capture all those natural sounds off the floor without processing them. Well, for a lot of genres of music, that is excellent advice. If I'm recording a string quartet, what I'm about to get into does not apply. But 99% of what I work on there's no room for subtlety. Most of the time, I'm trying to make a major impact with a remix or whatever it is that I get up to. So this idea of backing off processing does not compute. And this is probably the biggest lesson I've learned over the past 10 years. I've had to unlearn a bunch of stuff, a bunch of theory and ideas. I had to deprogram myself. You should literally toss every single rule right out the window and use your ears. So let's dive in to exactly how I like to make sounds pop. This first example is a composition I did for a tourism project I worked on a few years ago. And it's got a synth sound right off the top that literally jumps out of the speakers. I love it. Check it. I love how that synth line is just popping in that mix. Let's have a listen to that part soloed. I went back to that multi-track and I found this original synth line unaffected. Check it. Yeah, that's just a straight up alchemy patch. It's got a nice little bit of reverb and delay built into it. So here's the original. And how I ended up processing it in the mix. I absolutely love the fact that all of that reverb and delay has just been seriously accentuated. How did I do that? A ton of compression after the fact. This is where the big discovery has happened for me in the past 10 years. I used to spend a lot of time setting up these really complicated parallel mixes, I would call them. You know, where you have multiple different sends going out to different effects and all of those effects are returning to the console very traditional kind of setup. Well, if I'm mixing a full orchestra or even like a string quartet, that kind of parallel mix system, that is exactly what I want to do for that kind of project. But when it comes to mixing like electronic industrial music or pop music, whatever it is, if you're talking about making sounds literally jump out of the speakers, the biggest lesson that I've learned is to sort of abandon that idea of parallel mixing and start putting things in series. When you 
take a sound and you crush it, you EQ it, you send it to a delay and you send that delay into a chorus. And then when all of that is done, you add another compressor to the end of all that to crush it all down again. This is the kind of processing that I'm getting up to today. You know, if I want a sound to literally pop out of the speakers, there's nothing subtle about what I get up to. Well, here's another great example of just how extreme I like to get with processing these days. I'll go ahead and play the original unaffected contribution that Carrie made to our Ogre project. Check it. Well, I applied some processing to that sound and here's what I came up with. Just an extreme amount of processing on that piano sound, but does it ever cut through the mix like no one's business? You know, this is such a huge variation on what I used to get up to. I spent a huge chunk of my career trying to be subtle about everything. And what I realized is if you want stuff to cut through that mix, throw subtle right out the window. You got to get aggressive with stuff. You've got to start processing sounds like you've never done before. And I encourage you to just experiment with this idea. Well, just for the exercise, let's go ahead and over process Carrie's original piano sound. So, First thing I'll do is dial up an equalizer. And then immediately I'll send that into a compressor. So we'll dial up a very simple compressor for that. A slow attack and a fast release. into a delay next. So it just dial up a very simple delay, like Echo Boy Jr. Something like that. And then absolutely throw another compressor on the output just to accentuate all of these effects even more. So very same kind of approach, slow attack, fast release, and just kind of hit it. Oh yeah, I can literally hear one of those old instructors just giving me a hard time about over-processing sounds like this. But the reality is, this is exactly what it takes to get that sound to pop, to make it jump out of the speakers. And here's a great example of how I like to use over-processing to make up for my lack of playing ability. I mean, I'm an engineer producer by trade and not a musician but I can definitely pick up a guitar and kind of noodle around on it a bit. Well, when you become an expert at applying effects to something like a guitar, you learn quickly that you actually don't have to be that good a player. You can get by and come up with some really cool guitar parts. Now, I'm gonna expose just how novice a guitar player I am. Check out this thing all by itself. This is unprocessed, just me playing an electric guitar, check it. I turned that very simple and mediocrely played part into this. Yeah, 
yeah, if I had to rely on my own playing ability and, and not rely heavily on effects, I'd be in big trouble as a musician. I'm just not one of those musicians that can pick up an instrument and just play it beautifully. I'm like a hack. So even a hack can sound killer when you know how to apply effects and over process that sound in the right way. Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session. And the very next time that you're looking for a sound to just jump out of the speakers and pop, I encourage you to over process that sound in a big way, to put all of those processes in series, to have each process compounding on the next one. Listen to what happens to your mixes. I think you're gonna be blown away.